You've once been quoted as saying that the military destroyed the civil service. Um, some others have said that the rot in civil service could be traced back to the time of the civil war. What really happened? Well, I don't think that quotation would be strictly correct. Um, say military destroyed the civil service. I couldn't do it all alone. The point really is that uh, the particular coup of 1975, followed by the mass purge of the civil service without due process, done with impunity, and people knew that what they did wasn't right. Then there was a decree saying you couldn't go to court to seek redress. When these people now came on power in 75 and decided to purge the civil service and bring them down to size, what happened was terrible for the country. Nigeria lost a lot in terms of institutional memory, in terms of people who would deal with the world, in terms of people who had helped in formulating the plans. People had helped to see the army grow from 10,000 to 200,000 to fight the civil war, and later on brought back to about 100,000, you know, after the war, who had created the logistics, the planning, and sustained it. You know, these people were used to working with the world. Suddenly, you cashed them, destroyed morale. The people were retired, who were, in fact, shining stars, who were being recommended for promotion, who were just coming from courses abroad, because no proper process was taken. And later on, when under Monsignor Pedro Martins, who was chaplain in the, of the Catholics in the army, he now was set up in a commission to review what happened. He found that well over 95 percent of those who were sent away were sent away wrongly. No due process, that is query. Tenure broken. Then this euphemism, make a while the sun shines. Because you are sitting in your office, your name is announced, you don't know if it will be tomorrow. And make a while the sun shines is corruption. And when the people who should be telling incoming ministers say, sir, these are the financial instructions, this is what you can do and what you cannot do, are not there with enough authority to perform that function. What we have now seen over the years began, you know, nobody restraining anybody, misuse of public resources, corruption, you know, when we make a while the sun shines, it's corruption. And uh, it gone into such proportions, it's unimaginable. Whereas the coup of 1966 talked about five percenters, 10%, that was the corruption then. Later on, we've reached a stage where well-researched reports indicate sometimes more than 300% inflation in public procurement. Um, before we go on to the issue of corruption, what would, you, you know, another purge seems imminent with the inability of states to pay salaries. Is downsizing a solution to the problem at hand? Of course, you can't be paying bloated salaries for people not performing. But at the same time, given the state of the economy, one advice that it has to be a gradual process. We have to start, you know, stimulating the economy, trying to create jobs so that you are not offloading people into just to go and swell the jobless market. So the first thing to do, of course, we have to agree what is the best configuration, what is the best structure for the public service. The federal government in the United States is run by 13 departments, a situation in which we have 40, 30 ministries and innumerable MDAs is not right. You should as they've started now, try to streamline. But before we go, haven't 
say this is what will be. Before we start implementing it massively, don't call it a purge. A purge is a different thing from uh, what you call right sizing. We should begin to take early action to stimulate the economy, to create jobs, so that we do not add, what do you say, poor petrol or oil on the fire. Yes, it's time to take another break. We ask that you please join us again.